Hey there, so today I thought we would discuss why online Alexander lessons are effective. Now, you may be aware that uh, traditionally the Alexander technique is taught in person. And obviously the, there's a long tradition of that. But what many people don't realise is there is and there are other traditions of which online teaching falls into that category. Um, now, I am an Alexander Technique teacher, and yes, I do teach online, so uh, I'm aware that this may seem like a marketing uh, spiel, and I'll just have to live with that, so be it. But I thought you might be interested anyway, and there are obviously some benefits to online teaching. Um, lockdown having been and gone, thankfully, hopefully, but that provided a good context of why um, teaching online was quite popular at the time. But it can still be useful because there's not always a teacher near you. Now, like I said, my name's Adrian um, and I'm a teacher of the Alexander Technique, full-time teacher. Uh, and if you would like out online lessons, feel free to get in touch. Anyway, so where does this all begin? So the Alexander Technique is traditionally thought as being taught in person, one-to-one, -one, usually with a lot of hands-on guidance. But it's not how it started. Alexander himself, of course, worked on himself. I think we should always remember that. The Alexander's Technique started by F.M. Alexander, Frederick Matthias Alexander, working on himself. And obviously he wasn't putting hands on himself. <laughs> and he always said of his work it was about thinking. He often talked about quickening the conscious mind. So if no one guided him with hands-on guidance, what did he do to improve his own coordination or use as we say in the Alexander Technique. How did he achieve that through thinking? And that's that's the question we kind of want to answer to see if we can reapply that process he applied to himself to show you how you can apply that process to yourself and follow in his footsteps. I think one of the advantages of that for me personally um, is you really own your own journey that way. I think that's a good thing. Uh, to feel very empowered by that. Now, not only did he not put hands on himself, it's claimed by his brother A.R. Alexander, yes, they were known as F.M. Frederick Matthias and A.R. Albert Redden, I believe. Is, yes, Albert Redden was A.R.'s full name, but they were just known as F.M. and A.R. And his brother A.R. always claimed that F.M. never put hands on him, never taught him through hands-on guidance, only verbally and then went on to become a well-known teacher in his own right. And in fact, AR isn't alone on that because although AR went on to teach, having been taught by his brother verbally, Alexander himself didn't just teach AR verbally. He also taught predominantly verbally until he moved to London. So all his early teaching was pretty much done all verbally. And the interesting thing about that is when he came to London, he came with a, a letter of, um, introduction, if you like, by, what was his name, J.W. Stradden Mackey or something like that, well-known, established um, surgeon of the time in Australia. And he provided FM with this letter of introduction to London because he was so impressed with his work. And I think he potentially even suggested he go to London and, and start promoting his work uh, further afield. And uh, he did that on the basis that Alexander was teaching mostly verbally at the time, possibly entirely verbally at the time. So the Alexander Technique is born out of a verbal tradition, actually, not a hands-on tradition. Later on, Alexander did go on to uh, develop hands-on modality uh, for various reasons, um, and, and it's fantastic to have both at our disposal. Um, it doesn't have to be one or the other. Uh, pros and cons of both. Now maybe I could get into an, another video on the pros and cons, but at the moment I just want to talk about why, why online teaching is effective. And it's effective because it's, it's based on how Alexander originally taught. Now later on, um, Marjorie Barstow, who was Alexander's niece and was on the first trainees on his first training course. Um, she went on to develop group teaching and was very successful with it. 
And although it's not quite the same, there is that parallel with group teaching that you can't always be there with a hands-on someone. You've got a large group of people. And she started researching and looking into this way of teaching around 1971, because she was offered an opportunity to teach a lecture, um, I think at a drama school. Um, I stand corrected on that, I'm not sure the exact institution, but I think it might have been. Um, and obviously she couldn't just work one-to-one, -one. she had a whole class and she was asked to produce a curriculum and do a whole semester. Um, so there's a lot of overlap there between, you know, group settings and one-to-one -one verbal or online. Because although, yes, you can go around and give some bits of guidance, for the most part, you're talking to a group of people and you're making, you're asking that group of people to make observations of other people, which is useful in itself. It, you know, group settings can be an, a nice environment to start learning as well, because sometimes we can observe things better in others than we see it in ourselves and we can learn from that. But that tradition, you know, is, what are we, it's over 30 years old now. No, 50 years old, over 50 years of group teaching that Marjorie Barstow really went out of her way to establish. In fact, FM Alexander had already started doing that, only in small amounts. I think it wasn't his main thing, but we know from Frank Pierce Jones, who uh, was trained by AR, sorry, not name dropping here. He wrote in one of his books how Alexander gave a group chat, a group, group lesson, a uh, mixture of children and adults, and seemed to be quite enjoy the experience, making jokes and just, you know, not feeling in any way that he was, he was um, doing a disservice to his clients. Um, it wasn't something he did much of, I believe, but he did do it. He, he didn't frown on the idea if he was prepared to do it himself. So there are many ways to, to teach the Alexander Technique, and there are pros and cons um, for both and all. <laughs> so that is why I don't think you should feel you're missing out by having Alexander lessons online. Hey, if you have the opportunity to see someone in person, it's always wonderful to take the opportunity. Um, and you can mix it up as well. There's nothing wrong with doing that. I, I've certainly had clients do that. Um, certainly through lockdown, I had clients that started in um, online lessons. And then when lockdown ended, we started doing in person, which they love. But because of convenience, sometimes we would still do online if they couldn't. Because you know, they might have actually been on the other side of town to me. I live in London, if they're in South London, I'm in North London. Sometimes I go, oh, we'll just do a day online, you know. The convenience, it's obviously one of the uh, upsides. So, yeah, I think that pretty much covers what I wanted to say, that basically there's a long tradition of it. It's, it's not a new thing to be teaching online. I mean, all right, but the online mechanism is new, but the process of teaching verbally is certainly not new at all. Uh, well established established by the, <laughs> the man himself, Alexander. So, uh, yeah, don't feel like you're getting shortchanged by having an online lesson. So there's food for thought, and uh, I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.